Now, if the test fails, it is time to investigate. A few initial things to check for include Welcome back to the channel where we make sterile processing education simple, engaging, and hopefully crystal clear. I'm Brandon, the Sterile Guy, and today we're diving into the fascinating world of sterilizer testing. Whether you're preparing for certification, sharpening your skills, or simply troubleshooting in your department, this video will guide you through the how, what, and when of testing steam sterilizers. Let's get into it. First things first, why do we test steam sterilizers? Well, simply put, steam sterilizers are the backbone of infection prevention. Ensuring they're working properly is critical for patient safety and compliance with standards from AMI, AORN, CDC, and HSPA, these tests help us verify the sterilizer's functionality and detect potential issues before they affect your department's operations or cause serious negative outcomes for your patients. Now let's break down what's actually being tested for. There are three main categories that we're gonna cover today. Number one is leak testing. Number two, air removal testing and number three, biological testing. Each of these tests serves a unique purpose and it's important they follow a specific order. Let's start with leak testing, which is the foundation of pre-vacuum sterilization performance. A leak test checks the sterilizer's ability to maintain a vacuum, which is essential for proper steam penetration. Leaks can cause incomplete sterilization and compromise patient safety. Here's how it works. Leak tests are performed when the sterilizer is cold, which is typically first thing in the morning. And when I say cold, I don't mean literally cold. I mean after a period of time that the sterilizer probably hasn't been running cycles. The machine runs a program cycle to measure the vacuum stability over time. So the sterilizer creates a certain amount of vacuum, and then it just holds that vacuum for a period of time to assess if the vacuum loses pressure over that time. What happens in a failed leak test is that the internal chamber of the sterilizer is a strong vacuum. And because something is failing, say for instance, a gasket around the door is wearing down, air is being pulled from outside the sterilizer through that gasket into the chamber, essentially reducing the vacuum's negative pressure inside that chamber. AMI standards recommend that the allowable leakage should not exceed 1.0 millimeters of mercury per minute. If you've experienced a failed leak test, here are some common culprits. Worn gaskets, loose door seals, or issues with the vacuum pump itself. Make sure to inspect these components before moving on to the next test. Next up is air removal testing, also known as the Bowie Dick test. This test ensures the sterilizer can effectively remove air from the chamber and the load, which is a critical step for steam to penetrate every surface of the instrumentation. Air removal testing must be performed daily after the leak test and before processing any loads for that day. You should use a commercially pre-packaged, pre-assembled Bowie Dick test pack, or if those are not available, you can assemble one following AMI guidelines, which is found in AMI ST79 2017, chapter 13.7.2.2. Place the test pack in the sterilizer according to the sterilizer and test pack instructions. Now, if the test fails, it is time to investigate. A few initial things to check for include obstructed steam pathways, wet steam, or even improper loading techniques. Before we move on, there's one thing I want to point out. I have heard techs ask, what is the difference between the leak test and the air removal test if they are both testing the vacuum of air? Now, this is a great question. The leak test is specifically designed to create a vacuum and hold it for a length of time, which is typically around 15 minutes, where it simply tests for changes in pressure, and that is all. The air removal test, on the other hand, performs a sterilization cycle in which not only does it vacuum air out, but it also then introduces steam at pressure. If the vacuum was unsuccessful in removing all the air, 
then the steam cannot penetrate the depths of the air removal test. Now you might think you can simply just combine these tests into one, but you can't, and here's why. Each test, if it fails, points out different possibilities of why. With the leak test, it points out areas like gaskets and seals. So if that passes, and now the air removal test fails, it is most likely not because of gaskets and seals, which helps you to narrow down the next steps you will take in your troubleshooting. Finally, we have biological testing, which is the gold standard of sterilization assurance. This test uses live bacterial spores to confirm the sterilizer's ability to kill microorganisms effectively. And here's how it's done. Biological indicators, or BIs, are placed in the most challenging locations for steam to reach and to be effective within a sterilization chamber, as well as within a device that provides significant challenge for steam to penetrate such as a PCD, which is known as a process challenge device. You will run the specific cycles that you will be utilizing for your instrumentation, then incubate the BI according to the manufacturer's instructions. It's important that you are using the exact cycles to test that you will be using to run instruments. Note, if you run different cycles, you will need to validate all the cycles that you use. But if there's a one-off cycle, maybe you don't use all the time and it's only an occasional use, then you can simply run the biological at the same time that you actually run those specific special parameter instruments. Now, a negative result indicates that the microorganisms failed to reproduce, which means that sterilization was successful, while a positive result signals failure because it was unable to destroy the microorganism's ability to live and reproduce. Now, according to Amy, biological testing should be performed weekly, but preferably daily, with each type of cycle used and with every load containing implants. One more thing I would like to mention is that biological testing, according to Amy, should be done in the most challenging fashion. This means biological testing should not be done on an empty chamber. You should be performing your biological testing with a full load of instruments, which is much more challenging on the sterilizer than an empty load. So if you are performing your bio testing after midnight, for instance, and you are running that on empty cycles, that is a no-go. You need to modify your practice to run bios on the first real load of the day. Only leak tests and air removal tests should be done on empty loads. Now let's talk about situations that call for testing outside of the normal operations. These can include instances like after sterilizer repairs or maintenance, when relocating or reinstalling a sterilizer, um, following a failed routine test, and after significant downtime or power outages. In these cases, you'll want to repeat all three tests, leak, air removal, and biological. Always document your results and communicate any issues promptly. So what should you do if a test fails? Here are some troubleshooting tips. For leak test failures, inspect the gaskets, the seals, and the vacuum pump. For air removal test failures, check for wet steam, ensure proper test pack placement, and confirm the sterilizer's parameters. For biological test failures, verify cycle parameters, assess steam quality, and confirm proper BI handling. And remember, always consult the manufacturer's instructions and refer to Amy and HSPA guidelines for best practices. And there you have it, a comprehensive guide to steam sterilizer testing. By performing these tests routinely and addressing issues promptly, you're playing a crucial role in patient safety and infection prevention. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you never miss an update. If you have any questions or just wanna reach out, don't hesitate to drop a comment down below. I wanna thank you guys for watching this video and as always, I will catch you in the next one.